Halleluja. Halleluja. God is good. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Oh, hallelujah. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> the word alive is worth the drive. For it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Would you just turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 1, please? Hebrews 1. Glory. Hebrews chapter 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Verse 1. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in his last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir over all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Again, at various times he has spoken in the past, he's spoken through prophets. He's spoken through multiple ways. Now he's speaking through his Son, but now we know that he's speaking through his Spirit. Amen? His son and his son's spirit. In verse 3. And be in the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat at the right hand of the majesty on high and having become more, but much better than the angels as he has by inheritance, obtained a more excellent name than they. In other words, God spoke in various ways, and then, but then through Jesus, and now he speaks through us, through the Holy Spirit and his word. But it's all directed through his spirit, and that spirit is the spirit of Jesus. Remember, the word says something very powerful. The word became what? Flesh and dwelt among us. He became flesh. The word of God became flesh. Everyone say the word, the word is substance. Is substance. The, word the word is substance. Everything that you see here was created by the word. Amen. All substance is created by the word. You may think that man assembled it, but everything was created by by the word of God. Every bit of material, everything in this realm was created by the word of God. Everything that you see. Now, man has taken the things that God has created and turned them into things. Amen? Amen. But it's still created by the word of God. Substance is substance regardless of what. So if everything that was created by the word of God, amen, when you speak, it hears. Are you listening? Amen. That's why you can speak to things and they change. Amen. Because everything is subject and submissive to the word of God, by the word of God, through the word of God. That's why Jesus came into this realm. He is the word of God. He became substance of his own words. Is everybody okay? Let's go to John chapter 1 for a second so we can clear this up. That's why when my car used to break down, I used to be able to speak right to the engine and it would get healed. Amen. I would lay hands on my 46 Chrysler limo because I was chauffeuring Jesus. <laughs> and when that thing used to break down, man, I would lay hands on that engine and tell it to be made whole. If God can heal a body, he can heal my engine. Why? It's all substance. And I'd go in there and start that baby up and vroom, and I'd take off. 
glory. John chapter 1. Is everybody there? In verse 1, what does it say? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were what? Made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Hello. So every seat you're sitting on was made by the word of God. You be made by the word of God. Verse 4. In him was life. And the life was, of, was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He wasn't that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him hmm. he came to his own and his own did not receive him but as many as received him to them he gave the what the right he gave you a right to become children of God to those who what believe which means to what follow follow that means when you follow you don't touch unclean things when you follow you don't approve of things that are unclean when you follow has everybody got this you hate evil you hate it if you don't then you're not a follower you're not genuine remember we talked about being genuine there are many who say they call themselves christians but they're really not genuine Amen? Genuine takes a heart connection, not a mind connection. That's where people believe that they're genuine, but God judges by what? The heart. He knows whether they're his or not. Because there's a lot of people with a lot of words. Even the devil can quote scriptures. Amen? But he genuinely hates God and me and you. But he's not genuine believer, is he? Amen. And as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who follow in his name, believe in his name, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor will the will of the man, but of God. And the word became what? Flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Grace which is God's plan. This is not some foolish thing that religion teaches. Grace is God's plan. It's not unmerited favor. It's unmerited love. Amen? It's amazing how many people think, well, I got unmerited favor. Oh, no, you don't. You ain't earned it. You walk in an unmerited love. His love for me and you doesn't change. Favor is earned. Trust is earned. Does everybody get it? God just doesn't give the keys to his cars to someone that don't know how to drive. It's earned. That's why he brings us through a learning process. Because if you don't learn, you get burned. Amen? And freedom is learned. And then he tests you. He wants to know whether you're going to still touch those unclean things, if you're going to approve of those things. He wants to know whether you're an idiot or a moron. Or you're right with him. Whether you're truly following him, whether you're really his, whether you're genuine, or you're a bag of bones, dead and dry, living and surviving for yourself, headed to hell, even though you call yourself a Christian. Because who you serve when you die is where you go. Amen? So in this, we see that the word became what? Flesh. His substance, he took it, formed himself, put his spirit, his spirit in it, and he took this substance, he put pure blood in it from dad, created his own blood, not from man, because he didn't have a father, did he? Amen? Because he was the father. 
Daddy came here to rescue me and you and called himself son. He was hidden in the bosom of God, pulled himself out and said, you're going to be son because you're the word. You know, everybody goes, well, there's the three witnesses having Jesus, the, the father and the spirit. No, Jesus was not then. Jesus never came, Jesus, until the word became flesh. Then he labeled him with the name Jesus. Has everybody got it? Because the name of Jesus is substance. What's it labeled to? The creation. The creator of the word. He labeled himself. He had, it was his business card. You want heaven? Here's my card. You want to be right? Here's my card. I'll teach you. Everything in this substance, all eternity, all glory, all eternity was in the substance of the body called the Christ. That's why he's known as the Christ who was, is, and who is to come. He was not bound by space and time, but he brought, sent himself into this realm so that people could see. So that could what? See. Mm. Luke 4. Verse 18, I love this. How many of y'all love God's word? You know why? Because you love truth. If you don't love truth, you're out of order. If you don't love truth, you're L-O-S-T, living outside of salvation's truth. Only those who love truth are living inside of salvation's truth. And anyone who dies outside of salvation's truth don't make it home. But I accepted Jesus 40 times. Well, you missed 41. <laughs> Verse 18. Let's speak it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the who? The poor. This is, this is not financial po poverty. Has everybody got it? This is somebody humble to the poor. It's somebody humble. Poor in what? Poor in spirit. Somebody hungry for more of God. Somebody that's humble, not prideful. Because the pride can't receive nothing. To preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, emotionally broken. To proclaim freedom, liberty to those who have been taken captive by the devil. To set at liberty those who are what? Those who are what? Those who are what? You gonna watch? Are you gonna read the word with me, bro? Praise God. To set at liberty those who are what? Oppressed. To proclaim the what? Acceptable year of the what? Lord, and wait a minute, there's something we skipped. What was it? Come on, this is the most important thing. Does everybody get it? This is the most important one. What does it say? And recovery of the sight to our blind. Now, this is not those who are physically blind. These are those who are spiritually blind. It's called a veil that comes over the eyes. And even after you're born again, filled with the Spirit of God, the devil still comes back and puts it on you. Bam! And you know what you start doing? The same things you used to do. You know why? You lost vision. You lost sight. And that's what the enemy loves to do. He loves to take your sight, your vision. Is everybody okay? Acts 2. Glory. Acts chapter 2, verse 14. In the upper room, they started, got, everybody got slam dunked in the Holy Ghost. They were praying in tongues, and uh, the interpretation of tongues was going all over the place. People were hearing their own languages. They were like, whoa, what's this? I'm hearing the great mysteries of God through these people who, they're not even Galatians. They're not even uh, uh, from Ephesus. They're not this, they're not that. Where am I? But we're hearing all of our languages from all over the place. But the heck, they didn't know what the heck they were saying. They were just praying in tongues. And they were in the spirit, drunk, 
Yeah, oh, glory. Verse 14. And Peter, standing up with eleven, with the eleven, raised his voice and said to the men, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk, as you suppose, in other words, on wine, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. As it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see what? Snap, I like that. And old men shall what? Dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above. Is that happening now? Oh, you bet. And signs in the earth beneath. Is that happening now? Yeah. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Has that happened? Yes. It's going to happen real big time. Before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst as you yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Why? Because he created all substance and matter. Nothing can hold him. For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in hell or Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he both died and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the first of his body, the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, of which we all our witnesses, therefore being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear, that you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand to your enemies, till I make your enemies your what? Your footstool, praise be to God. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men of brethren, what shall we do? In other words, what do we do to be saved? What do we do? Because he explained it all, didn't he? Dreams and visions by the Holy Spirit. Dreams and visions by the Holy Spirit. That is not stopped. That's not stopped. It's still happening to those who are in position, to those who have a heart set and a mindset towards the Lord. It's not stopped. Amen? John chapter 9. Oh, glory. Tonight's teaching is called Catching the Vision. Catching the Vision. Hallelujah. 
In verse 1. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. How many of y'all know we've been blind since birth? Spiritually blinded. You were born spiritually blinded. Amen? And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So they knew about ancestral curses, didn't they? They knew about the effects of sin. Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. In other words, God was allowing, this guy was born physically blind for God's purpose. Pretty amazing, isn't it? I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. And as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with saliva. Why? Because he created it. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seen. Why? He was touched by the creator. What did God do? He restored his eyes. Remember, it was for his glory, wasn't it? He was bringing reality that you and I have been born blind. He's the only one that gives true sight. And you must be able to see to catch vision. Everybody okay? All right. Verse 8. Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. He said, I, I am he. Therefore, they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received sight. And they said to him, where is he? And he said, I don't know. They brought him, they brought him who for, formerly was blind to the Pharisees. Oh, snap. Now, it was the Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. <laughs> then the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I wash and I see. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was division among them. Then they said to the blind man again, why do you say, what do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. He said, he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. And they asked him, saying, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees we do not know or who opened his eyes we do not know. He is of age. Ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. They get thrown out of the country club. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. And he answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that I was blind, and now I see. <laughs> then they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I told you already. You did not listen, you idiot. Why do you want to hear it again? What do you also want? To become, oh no, do you also want to become his disciple? Oh man, you want to fire up a religious demon? Woo! <laughs> then they reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. 
We know that God spoke to Moses as for this fellow. We do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, wow, why? This is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from. Yet he has opened my eyes. Now, we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears them. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could not do, do nothing. They answered and said to him, You were completely born in sins, and you are teaching us? <laughs> and they cast him out. <laughs> I love it. Remember, Jesus came to bring sight. Sight. So we could spiritually see. But the enemy has all kinds of religions that keep people blinded. Did you ever wonder why some people just don't get it? Or why they got it and then lost it? Because they lose vision. They lose sight. Amen? Is everybody okay? Matthew 20. You were and I were born blind until born again by the Spirit then empowered to see with new sight. Matthew 20. Oh, glory. Verse 29. Matthew 20, 29. Would you read it with me? Now as they went out of... Jericho, a great multitude, followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet. But they cried out all the more. They said, you know, forget you guys. I don't care what you're telling us. We know that the one that can make us see is here, even though we can't see him. The one that can heal me and touch me. Change my life. Him I'm going to cry out to. I'm not concerned about being quiet. Hmm. Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. So Jesus stood still and called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? Man, you call out loud enough. You know what he's going to say? What do you want me to do? But usually it's first, you're asking him, what do you want me to do? Sometimes he'll respond back, what would you like me to do? They said to him, Lord, that we're, our eyes may be open. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they did what? They followed him. That's a sure sign of someone who's got spiritual sight. What did they do? Follow. They what? They follow. That's truly someone who is able to catch vision. They follow. They follow. Why? Because without following, you lose sight. The moment you stop following, you lose sight. And then what, let me tell you something very important. You lose sight, but you get another sight. And that sight is not from God. That's a sight that promotes self, fulfills self. Everybody calls it God's will, but it isn't. It's the will of man. It's the will of the flesh with blinded sight. Does everybody get that? Because when you're truly following him, you're denying you. Amen? When you're following false vision, you're fulfilling you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's where people become hypocrites. Oh, glory. Is everybody all right? You received them sight, and they did what? They followed. Go to Habakkuk. Page 1080, somewhere around there. 1080? Where did you get that guy? Ah. Crazy dude. I love, I love Chapter 2, Habakkuk 2, it's just for you. Page 
Are you ready? Verse 1. Let's speak it together. I will stand my what? Watch. What's somebody who stands watch? What do they do? They watch. They see. They're alert. Yo! Amen? They're not sleeping. They're alert. I will stand my watch. What else? I will set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and watch to see. What are they trying to do? They're looking at him. What are you going to say to me? Is that fellowship? Yeah. You betcha. What he will say to me and what I will answer when I am what? Corrected. Corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain, plain on tablets that it may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will what? It will speak. And it will not lie. See, visions from the Lord don't lie. Plans from God don't lie. Though it tarries, do what? Wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his what? Faith. Now, I want you to look at the connection, because faith is known as vision. You hear, you see, you do. Without seeing, you don't do. You're doing is because you saw it. You caught the vision. Everyone say, I'm catching the vision. <laughs> See, you got to be able to catch the vision. It's like when you play baseball. You throw the ball. You got to catch the ball, right? Amen. You can't do anything until you catch it first. Amen. Then you're able to take it out of the mitt and throw it back. You catch the vision. But you first must be able to hear to catch the vision. Those are also called mysteries. And we'll talk about that in a second. Everybody okay? You hear, you see, and you do. That is called catching the what? Vision. Mark 4. Oh, glory. Mark 4. Mark chapter 4. You know, what was it, Friday night, when the Holy Spirit said, I'm releasing a word to each and every one. Did you see it? Yeah. Then you caught the vision. Because you did what? You heard. And then you caught it. Many of you had, what was the one that you had? Simple. So she, t uh, Colleen told me today that the word that she got was called Simple. So she decided to look it up. Now, I want you to grab hold of this, okay? She brought it to me today and said, I got the word simple. So she decided to go look it up, right? And what did you look it up in? In the dictionary. And you know what was the um, synonym or whatever? Was meant snap. <laughs> snap I mean she brought that to me and she goes it sent it, him with snap I was like what <laughs> snap simple simple snap praise God I thought it was powerful Yeah, man, praise God. Snap. So when you tell, when I, snap, simple. Uh, where did I say to go? Mark 4, 2. Mark 4, verse 2. Then he, Jesus, taught them many things by what? Parables. 
By what? Parables are parallels of the spirit realm and the physical realm. Amen? And said to them in his teaching, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. The birds of the air came and ate and devoured it, and some fell by the stony ground, and were, it did not have uh, much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had, not, had no root, it withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no crop. But other, uh, other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up and increased and produced some 30, some 60, and some 100. In other words, there were those who were catching the vision and those who were not. Why? Because interruptions, different things that are causing them to be distracted, amen, they didn't catch it. Let's go a little further. And he said to them, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, to you has been given to know the what? Mystery. The mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So that seeing they may see and not perceive. <coughs> Hearing they may hear but not understand. Lest they should turn and their sins be what? Forgiven them. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? He said, the sower sows the what? Word. word. Is word substance? Yes. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. They didn't catch it, did they? These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises, for the word's sake, they run to the world and deny the word. They stumble. Immediately they do what? They stumble. Why? Because they did not really catch the vision. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the emotional attachments of this world, the selfishness of this world. They're still fighting for their lives. They're in survival mode, not surrender mode. And they cannot catch the vision. It bounces right off the mid. These are the care ones that care. The deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful but these are the ones sown on good ground those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit why because they caught the vision they're able to hold on to it and produce believe receive and what execute and they did it 30 fold 60 fold and some 100 fold return only those grounded and under the divine authority spiritually positioned are able to catch vision. Sin will always blind. Anything in this world blinds, it steals. Is everybody okay? Parables are parallels of mysteries that are coded messages. Are you ready for this? They are coded messages of words grouped in the dimensional Realm, dimensional barriers of Christ. Are you hearing? I'm going to say this again. Parable, parable, parables are parallels of mysteries that are coded messages of words grouped in the dimensional barriers of Christ, released to be caught by his children in the spirit, decoded into a vision and released into this realm. Are we okay? 
And somebody like, huh? <laughs> Praise God. I'll say it again. These parables are parallels of the mysteries. These mysteries. I'm going to speak about mysteries. What are mysteries? Mysteries are coded messages of words grouped in the dimensional barriers of Christ in his realm. And they were released to be caught by his children who are in the spirit so that they can be decoded in a vision and released into this realm for his glory, for his purpose, and for his plan of strategies. That's how you catch vision. The purpose of catching the vision is so it can be decoded and then released into this realm. Is everybody okay? The devil does not know the mysteries. He cannot decode them. The only one that can decode them is through the spirit. That's why there are things that the devil just don't get. Does everybody understand that? I guess I better go somewhere real quick. Let's go to, uh, go somewhere. Where am I going? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14. Gosh, I didn't even write it in here. Hallelujah. Anyways, we're going there. 1 Corinthians 14. Is everybody there? Are you ready? Verse 1. What does it say? Pursue what? Love and desire what? Spiritual gifts. Glory. But especially that you may what? Prophesy. Pro when you prophesy, you're actually doing an interpretation. You, when prophecy comes, you are actually decoding. Okay? See, people think just prophesying, it's not just speaking something. You must get vision first. Verse 2, are you ready? For he who speaks in a what? Tongue does not speak to men, but to who? God. So I'm praying in tongues, and when you're praying in tongues, you're not speaking to men, you're speaking to God. Amen? For no one understands him. In other words, even the devil doesn't understand why? Because it must be decoded. Why? However, in the spirit, he speaks what? Mysteries. Uncoded messages. From the, from the barriers of Christ, his realm, that is released to me and you through the spirit of God. When it is caught, it is in, decoded by through interpretation. And when it is spoken, it is called prophecy. Is everybody okay? Why? You're calling those things that are not. You're bringing the things from his throne, from his realm, into this realm so it can be released. That's what Paul did. Why do you think he wrote 95% of the New Testament? Because he was able to catch vision and interpret what God was saying. They were called mysteries. Amen? Does he want you to do it? How do you think all of this came? already get it that's why when you're praying in the spirit it goes into your spirit and then there's an interpretation now there can be an interpretation in the group when we pray sometimes that was the interpretation would the lord tell me to yell friday night when we were praying in the spirit all of a sudden he said what did he say i'm releasing a word to each and every one that was the interpretation i saw it now I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't understand what the tongues was, but he was bringing a message to us. And the message was, I saw words coming down into people's spirit, not into their mind, into their spirit. And as I began seeing words into their spirit, drop into their spirit, then that's when I spoke. I said, the Lord is dropping a word to each and every one. And those who caught it, got it. Snap. First Corinthians chapter two. 
And don't let the devil beat you up. Oh, I didn't get it. I missed it. Don't worry about it. Catch the next one. Put on two gloves. Get yourself a catcher's mitt. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6. Let's speak it. However, we speak wisdom among those who are what? Mature, Mature not the wisdom of this age or this world, Amen. nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to what? Yeah. Nothing. But we speak the wisdom of, the, of God where? In a what? Mystery. And what is a mystery? It's an un coded message that has to be decoded by his children. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory. Now it's going to take some wisdom, isn't it? To decode these two. Which none of the rulers of this age knew for if they had known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Verse 9, let's speak it. But as written, I has not seen or ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Love him. If you love him, you follow him. If you follow him, you love him. If you don't follow him, you don't love him. And he knows it. Verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Wow. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him, which can't interpret nothing except the things of the world. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of, who is from God, that we might know the things which have been freely given to us by God so that it can be decoded. So you won't know it unless you can decode it. That takes positioning. Oh, glory. Is everybody okay? Amen. Verse 13. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man doesn't receive these things of the Spirit of God. Why? Because they don't know how to catch for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. They think it's just a waste of time. Let me get a job. Let me get some money. Let me get on with my life. Amen. Let me do this. Let me do that. Carnal. Not willing to step into the spirit and catch the mysteries. Let me tell you the greatest thing to know is that you are pleasing God. When you know you're pleasing him, you have such peace. When you know you're not pleasing him, you can't kid yourself. You can act it for a little bit, but eventually you're going to become miserable, oppressed, and just go plumb crazy because you know you're not pleasing him. See, when you're called, you can't go no other way. <laughs> you can't go no other way. Yeah, I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how many material things you have. When you are called, and if you're in this room, you're called. You will never be happy and content until you fulfill the, your mission. Amen? You will not. I don't care what's going to happen. You're going to hit so many walls of reality. You're going to look like another creature little flesh creature. People get so wounded, man. And they just get up and keep running into the same wall. It's like, how dumb can we still breathe? Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Ephesians 3. Catching the vision. Oh, but the enemy loves to distract. You know, it's amazing if, if, if you're truly in that place and God provides everything, right? There isn't anything you need. He, he makes a way. He makes the way. You're not struggling. He makes the way. 
If you're really there, if you're really in that place, if you're really in that position, he makes a way where there just seems to be no way. I don't know how you're going to do it, Lord. Don't worry about praying the Spirit, catch it and decode it and we'll show you what's up. But don't move ahead of me. And don't stay too far behind me. And don't get distracted and go down the wrong road. When I tell you to go straight, don't go left. Amen? Because then you'll we'll have to catch up later. And that's when people play catch up. You know, I was in, I was in, when was it? I was in the jail Monday, last night. And one of the things is the Holy Spirit, because I don't know what's going on until I usually get there. I don't know how he's going to orchestrate things. I just pray in the Spirit. Then catch the vision, interpretation comes, and it's released and decoded. And I just walk in there. And, and, and one of the things that the Holy Spirit said, he said, so many people run from accountability. They're not accountable. The moment you want to run from accountability, you have hooks in the jaw, and the enemy's taking you, and he's taking you out. And what he wants to do is kill you. Accountability. And we began to talk about some of the things, because when you know, people get out of jail, I said, and one of the things the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was reading everybody's mail. It's so powerful. I love when he does that. You might say dirty laundry, I don't know, mail, whatever. But the one thing is, is I need to get a job. That's the first thing they think. Man, I've been in jail. I need to get a job. I need to make money. I need to catch up. Accountability is not even near it. Man, I, and as the Spirit was letting stuff go and saying all kinds of stuff, dudes started weeping in the classroom. Like, Whoa. And I did that, man, I'm back here. You know, it's like, whoa. Because he, was, he wasn't convicting. He was counseling them. What was he doing? He was showing them where they went wrong. The first thing that needs to be established is accountability. If you can't be accountable to man, you can't be accountable to God. It's impossible. That's why he has fellowship. That's why there's overseers. Jesus talked about overseers, right? To be accountable. And to be accountable to one another. That's, a, that's what it's about. If you run from accountability, you're running in the hands of the devil. Ain't no doubt about it. And the only thing you're going to catch is trouble. Amen? Is everybody okay? Praise God, where was I? Did we start this yet? Verse 8. Verse 8. To me, who am less than the least of the saints... This grace was given to me that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ to make all see what is the fellowship of the what? Mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifestation, the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to by the church to the pr principalities and powers in the heavenlies is according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord to whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you which is your glory. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the what? Inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend or interpret or decode with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of of God. Catching the vision. Takes maintaining connection in the spirit. Amen. Mysteries to see this fellowship. There's a fellowship. There's a fellowship in the spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In verse 7. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. 
All right. Thank you. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our immortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all these things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward is the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding the internal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporary. But the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Catching the vision is decoding the mystery from the eternal into the temporary realm. This is the temporary realm. Seeing all things as decoded words. I want you to grab hold of something. Everything is substance. Everything is made of God's word. Amen? There is, I mean, you know, God is so cool. Um, anybody ever watched the movie Matrix? Did you see when all of those codes come down? They're always coming down. I want you to look at that as all substance of this realm by the word of God. Everything. See, when God spoke, it continued. Everything is still held together by his word. All of that is constant. It's all his word. And you and I who are in the spirit, does everybody understand it? We have access to all things. So when God takes those words that are constantly going and groups them so that it is a hidden mystery so that the devil does not know how to interpret it and he releases it to me and you and as we catch it and decode it and release it into this realm, we always stay one step ahead of the devil. Does everybody understand? Or more than one step. But if you're not willing to catch the vision, if you're not willing to look and to be able to see, if you're not willing to hear, if you're not willing to follow, if you're not willing to obey, you will step in traps over and over. The enemy will cause you to sway, to touch unclean things, to agree with certain things that are not of God. And eventually you go back into the cycle of deception. The veils can come back on the eyes. And you're back right where you started from. Amen talks about the mysteries of his will by decoding. Amen? His, his will is decoded. Is everybody okay? There's that area where these mysteries are revealed to his genuine saints. Go to Colossians chapter 1. There's a lot I want to share, but I don't have enough time. But anyways. Colossians chapter 1. Woohoo! Are you getting this? Verse 24. You know, some people are going to think, you're crazy. Remember, we're not of this world. So they're going to think, you're crazy. Verse 24, I now rejoice in my what? Sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the 
and afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the what? Church, which I became a minister according to the stewardship from which God has given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the what? The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now it's been revealed to his genuine saints. To them, God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery, mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Paul was a phenomenal decoder. Phenomenal. First Timothy chapter three. You though I hope to come to you soon, shortly, but uh, if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. And without controversy, God is. Without contra controversy, great is the mystery of what? Godliness. It's a mystery. And that means it must be decoded, right? Okay, here it is. God was what? Manifested in the flesh. In other words, he decoded himself. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up to glory. Man! He decoded himself in this realm. And then he left his spirit for me and you so that we could catch the vision and decode other mysteries. Amen? Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. In verse 1. Is everybody there? 2 Thess chapter 2 verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one do what? Deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the son and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, known as Antichrist, right? Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time? For the what? For the what? Mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. In other words, the mystery of lawlessness is at work. That's why individuals don't see what's going on. Because lawlessness is at work, but the mystery must be what? Decoded. So people are not catching vision. So this mystery that is there, they don't even see it. They're caught up in it. They're participating with it. With all the evil works. All the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. All the things that are defying against God. They are caught up with it because they can't not decode it nor interpret it. Why? They're blinded. They're not his. Is everybody okay? The world cannot decode the mysteries of lawlessness because they can't even decode the mysteries of God. So they're caught up in lawlessness. And I'm going to close at 1 John 4. Those who used to see can no longer see. That's called the falling away. Why? They're not decoding lawlessness they're not exposing sin they're not exposing these things in their life they're just allowing it participating in it or approving it first john chapter four is everybody there everybody okay 
In verse 1, would you read it with me? In verse 1, let's speak it. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Many religions out there, man, deceiving people. Many wolves and sheep. Uh, uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and they also agree as of those who are in the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Is everybody okay? Everybody got it? Catching the vision. God has brought sight for a purpose. Amen? We are seers of the Spirit. We are watchers. We wait for the release. Amen? When it is released, we catch it, decode it, so it can be released into this realm. That's called birthing also. Amen? Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Amen. Praise God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. Powerful. Thank you, Master. Help us get into position to become genuine and able to catch visions, the decoded messages that you're sending so they can be decoded into this realm. Count us worthy, O oh Lord. And what do we need to do to be worthy? We ask, Lord, for your mercies and for your grace, that we will be the offsprings that please you in every area, following you all the way through, seeing things through, hearing things through, and decoding those things that you send, that we may be well-pleasing to you in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with his glory.